All Out, the no longer secret stories of queer teens throughout the ages. A book talk by Christy Folsom. We were there, fighting on battlefields of 1870s Mexico, mourning at the 1994 funeral of Kurt Cobain. We've painted in artist studios in 1600s Amsterdam, and we've danced to disco music in the roller rinks of the 1970s. Queer people have always been a part of history, and in All Out, those stories are being beautifully and magically told. So why read a short story like All Out? Short story anthologies often get overlooked on our shelves, but All Out is the perfect example of why they can be a great choice for pleasure reading. First of all, there is a sheer variety of different unique histories, characters, and authors' perspectives within a collection like this. It's just a beautiful summer garden of different sights and smells and experiences. And because they are short, all those unique experiences are incredibly potent and powerful. While a novel is like a lovely cup of tea, a short story is a shot of espresso. With limited words, every word becomes important. Themes can be explored with more intensity, and these are stories that stick with you. As I've read through All Out, I found my brain just continuing to think back on these tales long after I've finished reading them. I've also found myself rereading some of my favorite stories in the collection and getting something completely different and new with each reread. And finally, there is an incredible versatility to an anthology like this. You don't have to read the book cover to cover. All Out, like history itself, is kind of timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. You can pick up historical periods that you like best to read first. You can go back and reread your favorites. You can skip the stories that don't speak to you. I really enjoyed the choice I had as a reader when I was going through this book. So with that in mind, let's dive into some examples of the stories from this anthology, All Out. One of my favorite works from this anthology was Elliot Wake's Every Shade of Red. Set in the 14th century in England, this is a retelling of the classic story of Robin Hood told from the perspective of Robin's lover, Will Scarlet. Wake manages to be incredibly inclusive of many different races, queer identities, and disabilities in a way that feels so naturally part of this story. In this scene, Will, who is deaf, is signing with Friar Tuck about many things, including his fears that he may have a warrant out for his capture. At the outskirts of camp, a willowy silhouette stood in the moonlight, idly twirling his staff while he kept watch. As I neared, Tuck planted the staff to sign. Evening, Will. Can't sleep? I'm looking for Robin. Haven't seen him. Tuck raised a bushy brow. His eyes were bright and intelligent, but warm, too. What's troubling you, my son? It was a joke. Friar Tuck, the boy who did not believe, he turned to the order to escape an arranged marriage, threw away his lands and legacy without a mote of faith in his heart. When I'd asked him why, he'd said, Could you imagine wedding a woman? having children and being happy? No, for you happiness is being with a man. For me, happiness is being among friends. Love takes many forms, Will Scarlet. If I must lie to the world to be true to my heart, then I'll lie, I'll cheat, I'll steal, and I'll do it with a smile. Love is the only higher power I answer to, and my love is no less for being chaste. Tuck knew the language of hands and it helped me teach the others. In the order, the brothers lived for days, weeks, months in strict silence, communicating only through signs. Quiet smoothed the ripples from the pond, he said. His mind grew calm and clear. The words he spoke with his hands took on deeper significance. An entire day would pass, and the only word he'd have shared with another soul was please. Imagine a world like that, he'd said. Imagine if all we could share was kindness. I touched the paper in my pocket. I'm in trouble, Tuck. The sheriff's after me. 
Our next story, New Year by Melinda Lowe, takes us to a completely different place and time, 1950 San Francisco, where Lily, a good Chinese girl, is getting an introduction into the underground world of drag kings and nightclubs catering to lesbians. In this scene, she makes the connection that Tommy Andrews, the drag performer that she's been quietly reading about in the newspaper, is dining right in front of her at her friend Shirley's Chinese restaurant. What are you looking for? Shirley asks. It might have been an ad, Lily answers. The rustling newspaper is a whisper, barely audible over the sound of conversation and laughter in the warm restaurant. It smells of fried dumplings and hot sour soup. Outside on the street, firecrackers are going off again, even though it's too early. Chinese New Year's Eve is tomorrow. It'll be launched with a fusillade of firecrackers right after midnight. But the Chinatown boys can never resist exploding a few in advance. That's when Lily remembers the section she saw him in. She flips through the newspaper with rising excitement, finally pausing on the After Night Falls column, which reviews nightclub entertainment. She scans the page, looking for the ad she vaguely recalls, but it wasn't an ad after all. Four photos are prominently featured with the column itself, three women, including Mae West, and one man. Lily surreptitiously compares the man in the restaurant to the person in the photo. The same shiny short hair, the same nose and cheeks. The caption reads, Tommy Andrews, Club Chi Chi Performer. Is that him? Shirley asks, leaning over Lily's shoulder. Lily scans the column until she finds the brief mention. Tommy Andrews, the male impersonator, brings something different into nightclub entertainment to Club Chi Chi. Something goes still inside Lily, as if her heart took a breath before it continued beating. Shirley's gone silent. Her eyes start back and forth from the photograph to the man at the table with three women. Tommy Andrews, Lily whispers. Shirley is a little pale. Lily looks back at the newspaper, scanning the ads beneath the column, and there's Tommy Andrews' name again. Tommy Andrews, male impersonator, Club Chi Chi, 462 Broadway, that's only a few blocks away from the Eastern Pearl. The bars and clubs are packed in close beside each other on Broadway. Lily's parents always tell her to avoid those blocks. They're for adults, they say, and tourists. Not for good Chinese girls. Not for girls at all. But Lily has walked along Broadway before. It's scarcely five minutes from her home, yet it always feels a world away. She likes the gaily painted awnings and the tall neon signs, the music leaking out from behind closed doors, the ladies in smart hats and high heels with their stocking seams neat at the back of their silk sheathed legs. There's something vivid about those blocks that light a secret flame inside her. It's not natural, you know, Shirley says softly. Ladies shouldn't look like men. So I hope these excerpts give you a bit of a glimpse at how powerful it is to tell these stories. As a lesbian myself, it was incredibly validating and just empowering to see myself reflected in places and times that I've been told for most of my life were straight by default. I was equally enthralled to learn about other experiences beyond my own. To get a glimpse of a history won by trans and brown and deaf and ace young people. I'm very grateful to Hoopla who recommended this book to me. Hoopla is a great resource for getting eBooks and audiobooks for free using your library card. And I would highly recommend using it to get a taste of this beautiful, mystical, historical gem of a book. And if you like this book and want more, don't despair. There are three books in the All Out series, including Out There, Into the Queer New Yonder, an anthology of sci-fi and futuristic stories with a queer twist. I would also recommend Toil and Trouble, a YA anthology of 15 stories featuring contemporary, historical, and futuristic witchy heroines. And This is Our Rainbow, which is an LGBTQIA plus anthology written by a plethora of award-winning authors specifically for tweens.